أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على مبعوث رحمة للعالمين محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تلع بالإسان لمدين رسمته براثرز ونسيسز السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته um, Welcome to the second part of this session tonight بإذن الله تعالى um, we are going to continue as we have the Sheikh here to tell us what we need to know um, about this topic tonight. Very interesting topic as we all know about trials, fitna, all of us as the Sheikh mentioned um, before Salah, we all face trials. All of you sitting here you are facing trials but it's just in a different form. Some of you your trials are different. It can be family, it can be friends, it can be work, it can be whatever. But your trials are different. So take your own trial. Your husband, I know. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> they said a husband, wives. That's good, it's good. Trial is a trial. It's fine, Alhamdulillah. But what? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. What we want to um, indicate here is that, Alhamdulillah, we're going to have to take this into practice on board. And we take heed, then we put it into practice to understand how to react during this trial and what is our own stance and lessons learned from them. Without much ado, I'll pass the mic now to the Sheikh, inshallah. Sheikh Faisal Bawadi, Farita Faddala Sheikh, Mashkura. Bismillah ar rahman ar rahim alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam wa ala shirif wa sallam wa ala muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ala assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum Alhamdulillah, you have just finished our salat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it for us. Any kind of mistake that you have made, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all. Brothers and sisters, once again, you are welcome. And our topic is very important. Or as you were talking about, what are you supposed to do? The trials that people had gone through and so on and so forth before our time came. So what are you supposed to do if this thing happens to us? Okay. What is the mind, the effect of the mind of Islamophobia? If somebody has that, it causes so many things. Among them, for example, it can be in any form. It can be individual or nationwide, whatever thing you can think about it. Okay. But you have to make sure that you stand very, very what? Fire. Fair. Why? Go to Surah 3, Ayah 120, which is Surah and Imran. And hear what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had said regarding this particular thing. Surah 3, Ayah 120. Surah Ali Imran, Chapter 3. The verse is verse 120. This is our reaction and what you need to do when you face trials. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani ur-rajim. إن تمسسكم حسنة تسوهم وإن تسمكم سيئة يفرحوا بها وإن تصبروا وتتقوا لا يدركم كيدهم شيئا إن الله بما بما يعملون محيط الله سيد إن تمسسكم حسنة when you ought to achieve good something good to so him it pains them they become unhappy they don't want to see you be happy that's their own that's the mindset of the terrorists the mindset of the ones who have hate for islam just islamophobic allah said to so him it pains them it hurts them just because he progress وَإِن تُصِبُكُمْ سَيِّئَةٌ يَفْرَحُوا بِهَا but when they see you go when they see you going through pain, yeah, they are happy. They celebrate. The those who have hate, that's what they do. They celebrate when they see you 
going through pain. وَإِن تَصْبِرُوا Allah said, but your reaction has to be like this. If you are patient, and not only that, وَتَتَّقُوا And you continue to fear Allah, you put a demarcation between you and what Allah dislike, Allah said, دَا يَدُرُّكُمْ كَيْدُهُمْ شَيْئًا Their plot will never, ever, ever affect you. Never. Why? Because إِنَّ اللَّهَ مُحِيْتُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بِمَا يَعْمَلُونَ مُحِيْتُ Because Allah encompasses everything. He, he knows all their plots. So his, his knowledge surrounds their plots and he controls it. He handles it. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had said all these things will happen to us. But when it happens, let's know what our reactions should be. You should not become very agitated and so on and so do that. No. But he said, you have to be patient. You have to have patience when that time comes. Because without patience, you may do something which will even more worse than what the person had done, isn't it? Without patience, you cannot think of what you are, you are supposed to do. Okay? So you should all the time make sure that you have patience. Have patience. It is like somebody who is sitting down. He is so hungry. He is very hungry. And another person came and said, can you please lend me some money? What should the reaction of that person be? Huh? Somebody he is very hungry. He hasn't got anything. And somebody came and said, please, I'm so depressed. Can you lend me some money? And so forth. What would be the reaction of the hungry person? He will what? Explode? Why? Why is he going to explode? Huh? <laughs> All right. In other words, all what he may say that, look, if I have that money, I will have become hungry now. I should have also gone on and what? Yes, and bought some food and so forth. But I pray that God will help you to get it from somewhere else. Okay. Therefore, we should all the time be very, very patient. Very patient. Because it is the greatest thing that Allah has said. Look at the same surah, Ayah 186. It is the greatest thing for you to have patience in terms of trials and tribulations. You must be patient. Okay, if you look at the same surah, Surah Ali Imran, verse 186. <laughs> وَلَا تَسْمَعُنَّ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَمِنَ الَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا أَذًا كَثِيرًا وَإِنْ تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ الله أكبر الله سيد لا تبلون You will certainly be tested You will be tried So you're going to have to know this that's the sunnah of Allah. That's the sunnah of Allah. You'll be tested, Allah said, certainly, for sure. <laughs> now, what kind of test? It's different as the Sheikh was saying it. Fi amwalikum, it can be in your wealth. Loss of wealth. And wa anfusikum, it can be in your own self, your souls. People will die. Some go through torture, pain, different forms. وَلَا تَسْمَعُنَّ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابِ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ And you will hear from people, ignorant ones, but here Allah said those whose, who, whose the knowledge of the book has been given to them. You will hear from them. Yeah? وَمِنَ الَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا And from those who 
as you sweat Allah with a partner, the mushrikeen, you will hear from them adhan kathira, plenty of insults, evil words. Wa in tasbiru. Allah said, boy, if you're patient, wa tattaqu, and you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ Allah said these are the greatest matters, things. Subhanallah. So be patient and fear Allah. So that is the remedy. Allah said it is a sunnah that you will be tested. And Allah had mentioned how many things here. How many things did Allah mention? No, no. He said you'll be tested in what? Your 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 and then at the same time, it comes to yourselves. It can be your family, your relatives, whatever it is. Even your own self. And I will try in that. In every aspect of life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I will tell you. And not only that, you hear a lot of insults. Once you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people will call you with all kinds of what? Names. Now, you see a Muslim, oh, he's a terrorist. Oh, he's a, what, fanatic. He's what? Extremist. Extremist. All kinds of things. Okay. Anything which is not good, they will label you with that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had said, if you, but look at an other. He said, other other kathira. You will hear a lot, a lot of what? Evil and harmful talks, words, and so forth. It's a kathir, a lot. So don't think only once. No. You hear so, so many things. They will insult you, they will curse you, they will do anything. But what are you supposed to do? What will be your reactions when you hear all these things? Be Be patient. Why you have to be patient? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that is the highest and the greatest of all the matters. Yes, patient. And patience is something that hasn't got a certain reward. That is known. All the others, you know that oh when I perform salat in the jamaah and it's been accepted, I get how many rewards? 27, isn't it? So you know that you are going to get that one. You do this, as I said, you get this one. You do that, you get this one. But the patience, he said, no. He said, that one, it is only I who will work that person. <coughs> so, what will be the reactions of these people towards us? Is it going to Test us, try us, punish us only once or twice, and that is not, and then they stop. Go to Surah 2, Ayah 120, and see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said. Surah 2, Surah 2, Ayah 120. Okay. Surah Baqarah 120. <laughs> you crash you up later. <laughs> All right. Surah Baqarah. Listen to this ayah. The Sheikh posed a question. He said, Do you think those who have hatred, those people who are committing this Islamophobia and then torture you for your belief, do you think they will stop? Okay. Now the Sheikh said, let's go and listen to this ayah which Allah said here. 
وأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولن ترضى عنك اليهود ولا النصارى حتى تتبع ملتهم قل إن هدى الله هو الهدى ولئن اتبعت أهواءهم بعد الذي جاءك من العلم بعد الذي جاءك من العلم ما لك من الله من ولي ولا نصير Allah said وَلَنْ تَرْدَ عَنْكَ الْيَهُودِ وَلَا نَصَارَ He said those who carry hate amongst the Christians and the Jew they will never accept you حَتَّى تَتَّبِعَ مِنْ لَتَهُمْ until you follow their path You see, they carry hate for you, huh? They will never accept you until you follow their own tradition. If you want to smoke, that's good. You want to drink alcohol? Come with us. You want to go to night club? Come. We can all, you know, we can we can join together. You want to hear mini, how do you call it? Mini scat or whatever? Come. Let's do it. But if you want to cover, no. Imagine someone goes naked outside, they said, I'm fine with it. Yes, yes. But when you cover, I said, No, why do you cover? Hey, Allahu Akbar. What world do we live in? They attack you just because you cover your head. And this your your head, you know. Not my head, it's your head. You cover it. They said, why do you cover your head? And we're talking about human rights. And when you pull it naked, you do evil chaka chaka. You know? You do like that. Yeah, chaka chaka. They are happy. Why? Because this is their own milla. It's their own path. Allah said, Walan tardan. They will never accept you. Why? Until you follow their own path. This is the Quran, not me. Allah said, Qul, say, tell them, Inna huda Allah, the guidance of Allah, Hul huda. That's the true guidance. But if you follow their own needs, their own desire, their wants, بعد الذي جاءك من العلم after you have received this word today the knowledge has come to you Allah said ما لك من الله من ولي you will never ever get protection from Allah now you see why the problem the Muslims are suffering Allah said once you follow their path then this is the result ما لك من الله من ولي you will never get a shelter and protection from Allah ولا نصير Never will Allah help you. Subhanallah. So that is it. They will never, Allah use the word, if you know Arabic, it's in Len. Len means never, never. Forever. Forever. So they will never ever accept you. Until what? You follow their way of life, your system. Once you do not, they will call you all kinds of names. You are a dictator, you are what, you are backward, you are barbaric, this and so forth. SubhanAllah. A woman just putting a scarf on her head, people are just afraid of that one. SubhanAllah. And you say, oh, that is a, what, oppression? Oh, that is a, and so forth. What has that thing has to do with you? Huh? If you want to go outside there with mini skirts, that's up to you. You go with it, isn't it? Nobody comes to tell you anything. If you do not want to go with mini skirts and you want to go with demi skirts, you go with it. <coughs> or you want to go naked, you go with it. No problem. But do not tell me what I should wear and what I should not wear. That is it. Everybody has his own things. Okay? And therefore, you should not also go and argue too much. When something's like, I don't argue too much. Here the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu The first one. This is here hadith of Umama. Abu Umama said, The Prophet Sallallahu said to me, he said about three main things. He said, I guarantee a home I guarantee a home. Everybody knows how to spell guarantee, isn't it? Yeah. What is that? How do you spell it? Yeah. 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 
even if he's on the right side. That's one, right? Now the second one, he guarantees Al Jannah where? In the middle of Al Jannah. For who? For the one who gives up what? Lies. Listen up. The one who gives up what? Lies. Lies, huh? I like what he says. The one who gives up? Lies. Good. <laughs> and what? False witness, right? Testimony. You see your sister, you did not see your sister doing this, or brother sees this, he say, I saw her. Koro koro. Even if, listen up, even if you are joking. In other words, you should not even joke by telling lies or give false words. Never you joke with lies. You normally tell, I know, when you get brown envelope come to your house, they come and knock, you tell the children, if that one now can tell them I'm not in, and you're inside. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Indeed. And what some of the children they do, when they come to the mother's side, tell them, when your mom said this or dad said this, when they knock, tell them, he did not lie. I knock, the man comes in. He said, hi, hello, how are you? I'm asking for your mom. Yes, my mom said I should say that she is not in. <laughs> <laughs> the second Jannah is where? In the middle of what? A Jannah for the one who gives up lies and what? False testimony, even if they are joking. Right, yeah. Now listen now the last one. He said, I guarantee a home in the highest of where? For who? For the one who possesses what? The best character. Now tell me, the one at the top, when you say character, what's character? You have to give up lies, false testimony, you have to be patient, you have to give up arguments, and what? Before you go up there. So you cannot get up there without the... It's a ladder. So you're going to have to go through all this and get where? Stop. From today, let's stop lying. And uh, of course, it's the same. Of course. <laughs> ah, you are backbiting and lying. They are cousins. One cannot go with the other. So may Allah forgive all of us. All right. Good. So, uh, can we all uh, let's finish with this hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha. Uh, the first hadith was by Abu Dawood and At-Tirmizi, uh, Ibn Majah and Anasai. Good. Now the next one, Aisha radiallahu anha had said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the most hated person to Allah, the person whom Allah hates most, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is uh, in Sahih Bukhari, is the one who is most quarrelsome. <laughs> of the opponents. The most quarrelsome. My brothers and sisters, you know, some of us, when we come, we listen to these beautiful sessions and these very touching words, we should be crying. Because some of us, when we start to make that palaver, if it starts from your houses, husband and wife, children and parents, then come out. Some of us, when we come here, yeah? like husbands, you come out, not me. <laughs> when they come out, they are the best. When they are inside with their family, they are the worst. And some of the sisters, well, when they come out, mashallah, they dress nice abaya. But if they are inside, it's trousers and they tie it to fight. <laughs> the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said according to the Sheikh he said this is in Sahih al-Bukhari authentic that the most hated person to Allah imagine Allah hates the person huh? is the one who is the most quarrelsome to the opponents some day we keep quiet, their brothers or sisters will keep quiet and we keep nagging. Like machine, it whines. And when the other one reacts, what happens? 
Fight. And those are the ones who behave as if they are innocent. Please. We want Allah to love us. May Allah forgive our sins. Amen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us al Jannah. Amen. Our brothers and sisters who died in New Zealand, may Allah forgive them. Yes, Amen. And all over the world, brothers and sisters, Muslims who have gone to the world beyond, may Allah forgive them. Amen. May the brothers and sisters in the deen, I don't have much to say, and I believe my humble Sheikh here doesn't have much to say this week. Inshallah, may Allah reward all of you, may Allah reward the Sheikh and his family. They are so beautiful. And our sisters, especially sisters, who are cooking, but not only cooking, some they are here ready to work, clean, dish up, do this, just for the sake of Allah. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, bless your family, bless your children, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you become happier this world until the day you're going to meet him. Don't forget, your goodness will never perish. The sadaqah that you give will never make you poor, but it, it enrich you. It makes you become the wealthiest person in the world and the hereafter. Rabbana khfil lana warhamna wa sturna wa afu anna wa tajawaz an sayyatina wa tawafana ma'al abrar Allahumma adkhilna al-jannata ma'al abrar innaka al-sami'u al-du'a mujibu al-da'awat Allahumma innaka qulta du'uni astajib lakum wa hatha huwa al-du'a wa hatha huwa al-du'a wa minka li-ijaba ya Allah فلا تردنا خائبين اللهم لا تردنا خائبين اللهم لا تجعل لنا ذنبا إلا غفرت ولا عيبا إلا سترت ولا هما إلا فردت ولا دينا إلا قديت ولا مريدا إلا شفيت ولا ضالا منا إلا هديت نسألك يا كريما ترفع مكتك وغلبك عنا ولا تؤخذنا بما فعلنا يا الله اللهم ألف بين قلوبنا ووحد بين صفوفنا اللهم أحبنا لنحبك يا الله اللهم أحبنا ولحبك يا الله اجعلنا من محبيك يا الله ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصل اللهم على سيدنا محمد وآخر دعوان الحمد لله رب العالمين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك ونشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته